Okay, we're back in yet another chapter of the saga of the Spartan 931 from 1930. And uh, last we were doing, the last video, I think we were working with the uh, speaker. And now we're up to the speaker flex ring. I mean, it is a flex ring. Burlap is not flexible, so the burlap has to be removed. And the uh, Carpincho leather that uh, was originally on it, you know, there's quite a bit left on there at the bottom. I'm going to take that off too. I need some more flexibility. Uh, and I was reading on the internet how, how someone was using uh, chamois cloth in order to uh, to replace it all so okay let's just tear it apart here and just alright this is it's all off no, nothing left but the basket so okay let's let's get started with the chamois cloth cut the chamois cloth uh, just like a donut and slapped it on there Shh, listen. Randall on the run. Not being behind. This is back to Andrew Harrison, who will find his brother Aaron trailing on the play. Thought about the deep three. It then goes to Randall on the left block. Randall turns. He's spinning off the glass and good with a left hand. And Randall has tied this game at 48. 14, 48 to play in Indy. Nice silent two dribble move. One on one with the finish. Rick Pitino, I think, wisely. Time out. 15 and 12 for the freshman Julius Randall is third. Consecutive double double. Okay, a homemade flex ring has been made and uh, looks a little crude, but it'll look a little better once we get the uh, get the metal piece around here. And uh, probably not much different than what they did. So, okay, we are moving on. Okay, we're continuing our spray painting, and uh, we've got the tuner apart, parts to the tuner, top off of that, and um, everything's looking pretty good here. A uh, little on the, the, I wouldn't say rusty, a little, little brown from the, from the years. I'm going to clean it up. The only thing I'm going to do, because I don't want to get too much into this, um, I don't want to bend anything. Make a take a little toothbrush and go in and out just to just to clean them out and take some of this Jiffy bath, which is uh, nothing more than contact cleaner, just to clean them up a, a bit without getting into it uh, too heavy. Okay, nice and shiny. As a matter of fact, the uh, tuning capacitors are brown. I like uh, copper brown, so I clean just about everything I can see. The patterns, underneath the patterns, I just sprayed them out, you know, just not moving the membrane too much. Uh, cleaned out where the aerial goes, uh, and just a little more cleaning, and then put it back together and, and uh, spray clean it, and that's all sure as far as this part's concerned. Uh, doing a little nighttime spray painting. The old uh, kind of Rustoleum metallic. The last thing to get cleaned is the base. Okay, a little steel wool uh, washcloth, a little soap and water, and uh, I cleaned the base off. Actually, it's in a lot better shape than, than I thought it would be. Looks like they put a little um, light walnut stain on it. And I got a piece of veneer missing. I mean, you know, I'm thinking, who cares? It's the base, but uh, you know, you still want it to look its best when people look in. It's veneer on the bottom. I could probably steal a couple pieces of veneer from the bottom and uh, fix the top where people can see if they look in. Uh, see these two pieces of aluminum, that's to carry the ground from, because it, it comes in four, four pieces, 
from one to the other and back. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably have a, a, a wire drill, a little hole and a screw and uh, just make sure that that, that ground uh, uh, maintains uh, when the set is moved around. But uh, so far so good, we're just moving right along. Just trying to get rid of the loose veneer, tighten it down a little bit. Uh, where it is loose, uh, I added a piece here. Come up a little short here, but uh, it'll straighten out. Just don't want anything to be loose. I'm not trying to move mountains here. Uh, using a little Elmer's wood glue and uh, let that sit for about 12, 14 hours and take it apart and move on. Okay, this is a set after it's been sprayed. It hasn't been put together yet. Uh, still has some tape on it that has to be removed. But it's just a matter of uh, putting things back together. And I've always had like a, a little fear that, uh, you know, you take things apart, you put it back together, and, and it doesn't play, and you don't know what went wrong. So hopefully, hopefully that won't happen. But if it is, you'll be here for that. Okay, got it all ready. I sprayed a little uh, gloss sheen on it, a little mohawk. Uh, I had a couple cans that were nearly empty, so I said, what the heck, you know, put a couple uh, cans of gloss on this. Uh, most of it's going to be covered. You can look at the line of, of uh, let's see, of what is covered right here all the way down. So actually the only uh, things that are going to be showing is these two pieces and around here. But I wanted to give it a, harden it up a little bit. And I notice over here, you know, I, I tightened all the veneer that was loose. Uh, and I notice over here, one, two spots. It's always something. Um, so I have to uh, glue them. And um, I wanted to get the set put together today because this this ends the video for now that's all the time I have to work on this set uh, but I'll show you something that happened okay there's a culprit right there I forgot all about this 1.2 K uh, 3 watt resistor that's uh, at the bottom here you can see where it's where it's located Forgot all about it, but I always check the sets about two or three times before I put them together anyway. Uh, so I sent to uh, one of the places that sell parts. I don't want to mention the part because uh, I don't have too much good to say about uh, them right now. Uh, but uh, what happened was I sent for a 1.2, uh, 1.2K 5 watt resistor to replace it so in, instead of sending me a 1.2 they sent me a 1.0 I've had a lot of trouble getting a hold of them uh, I called them and uh, they say they're having trouble with their customer service and they'll get it up as soon as they can uh, that's been several days um, they say write, a, uh, write an email to them uh, I did I haven't got any response so it's a good company and, and they sell a lot of the parts and I'm sure that if you repair uh, these vintage radios you've done business with them before probably uh, and they're, they're, they're a good organization but I'm, I've been having some trouble getting this one part that I can get in because after, after that part goes in I can, I can put the whole thing together uh, but of course I can't, uh, can't screw it down with that. So I was, I was hoping to have this all together to finish this video, uh, but we've done quite a bit and the next video we will do a couple things. We'll finish this up, put it together, and then we'll start working on the console, the wooden part. The one with all the smell and the sanding and the dust and all that nasty stuff. I notice that most people who uh, repair these radios love to do the electric stuff, love to get get down and change the capacitors and, and use all their uh, equipment and signal generators and, and, and all that, but uh, when it comes to doing the outside, not as crazy about it, even though there, there's a, quite a few out there that are very good at it. <laughs> but. Uh, Anyway, that's it for now, so let me in. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. 
okay and I'll be back as soon as possible and when it gets a little warmer and we'll we'll continue so thanks for tuning in